In the late 1900s, the Fugit family's blue skin was a medical anomaly. People of Kentucky, the Fugits are a family of blue-skinned people. In the early 19th century, a remote corner of Appalachia became home to one of America's strangest medical mysteries. Deep within a valley so difficult to reach that even experienced outdoorsmen avoided it, a frontier family began giving birth to children with unmistakably blue skin. The Fugates had seven kids. Three of them were pale, as white as their mother, who was in fact notably poetically pale. Quote, Their unusual appearance sparked generations of rumor, suspicion, and folklore, while the family at the center of it carried on their lives in relative isolation. For more than a century, no one understood what caused their striking coloration, or why it persisted so strongly within a single community. This video traces the Blue Fugates from their arrival in Troublesome Creek to the scientific breakthrough that finally explained their condition. It reveals how isolation preserved a rare genetic trait, how communities respond to visible differences, and how science can demystify stories once rooted in fear. Through their history, a remarkable connection emerges between heredity, environment, and human perception. Troublesome Creek, Kentucky, was an isolated valley surrounded by thick forests, tangled undergrowth, and uneven terrain. In the early 1800s, the region lacked proper roads, and travel required pushing through vegetation or following the winding waterway. Only the most determined settlers chose to build homes there. This isolation shaped the lives of everyone who lived along the creek and set the stage for an unusual genetic mystery. Among the settlers were Martin Fugate, a French orphan who obtained frontier land, and Elizabeth Smith, his wife. They planned an ordinary life, raising a family in the remote hills. Their plans took an unexpected turn when several of their children were born with bright blue skin. Of their seven children, three were pale, like Elizabeth, but the remaining four displayed the vivid blue coloring that would come to define the family's legacy. Oral accounts suggest that Martin himself may have carried a faint indigo tint even before settling in the region. Whether or not this is accurate, the blue-skinned children were a direct part of their lineage. Because Troublesome Creek was nearly inaccessible, the family's children grew up and remained close to home. Opportunities for travel were limited, and the geographical barriers encouraged families to marry within their own small community. Over the next several generations, these intermarriages led to the valley being populated by many blue-skinned descendants. Their appearance did not go unnoticed. Neighbors described their coloring as gunmetal blue, or blue as fish hooks, emphasizing how distinct they looked from the rest of the population. Reports also claimed that their shade of blue deepened under emotional stress or after drinking alcohol, suggesting that their coloration varied slightly with changes in circulation. Another curious detail emerged through observation. When members of the Fugate family bled, their blood reportedly appeared brown and chocolate-like rather than bright red. This unusual characteristic alarmed observers, but did not seem to threaten the health of the individuals themselves. Despite their unusual physiology, many Fugates lived long lives, often surviving into their 80s and 90s, which was remarkable for that period. While many family members lived healthily, their appearance drew unwelcome attention. In a region with few residents and limited contact with outsiders, rumors spread quickly. Some believed the Fugates were cursed, interpreting their appearance as supernatural punishment. Others blamed their condition on imagined ancestry or moral wrongdoing, revealing the prejudices and fears of the time. Stigma grew and the family became increasingly isolated. Some residents refused to allow their children to interact with the Fugates, fearing their blue complexion might be contagious. In response, several members of the family withdrew further from society, choosing to avoid town and public gatherings. Over time, avoidance on both sides solidified into deep social isolation. The family's visibility made them targets of suspicion, even as they continued their lives with little understanding of why they looked different. Without scientific investigation, explanations for the blue skin varied widely. One suggestion involved chronic heart or lung disorders, theorizing that extreme oxygen deprivation could cause the skin to take on a blue hue. While this aligned with the appearance of blue lips during circulatory problems, the Fugate's long lives and general good health contradicted the idea of severe, lifelong respiratory issues. The theory did not match their lived reality. 
Another hypothesis suggested that the family's blood lay unusually close to the surface of the skin, giving it a visible blue tint. However, this idea did not explain the chocolate-like appearance of their blood when exposed to air. The discrepancy between internal and external coloration complicated attempts to connect the theory to the Fugate's condition. The lack of coherent evidence kept the explanation speculative. A third theory proposed a blood disorder, known as methemoglobinemia, potentially caused by an enzyme deficiency or by dietary factors such as excessive vitamin K intake. Pork liver, for example, was considered a possible trigger due to its nutritional content. Without formal testing, this theory remained uncertain, but it aligned more closely with the physiological clues than previous explanations had. Still, few in the region had the means to verify it. Another widely discussed idea involved the ingestion of silver. In earlier generations, silver had been consumed as an antibacterial remedy and high doses could cause a permanent bluish-gray skin tone known as argyria. Though visually similar, this explanation seemed unlikely, as it required consistent access to valuable silver that many rural families would have been more likely to sell than ingest. The economic reality of the region made this theory improbable. More commonly, observers blamed the condition on inbreeding. The small population, lack of roads, and difficult terrain meant that many families married cousins or neighbors within the same few households. Travel between distant communities was laborious, and even basic journeys often required moving along creeks rather than through dense woods. While this explanation addressed how the trait persisted, it still did not identify the biological cause behind the blueness itself. For generations, these incomplete theories and rumors coexisted, leaving the cause of the Fugate's condition unknown. Their seclusion intensified misunderstanding, as no doctors investigated the phenomenon in a detailed or systematic way. The family's unusual appearance remained an unsolved curiosity passed down through local stories. Only in the 20th century did scientific tools advance enough to provide a clearer answer. The turning point came in 1960, when hematologist Madison Kaween heard accounts of blue-skinned families in eastern Kentucky. Kaween had a strong interest in blood disorders and approached the reports with scientific curiosity. With nurse Ruth Pendergrass as his local guide, he traveled into the hills to search for individuals who still displayed the distinctive blue coloration. The journey was difficult, reflecting the same geographical obstacles that had shaped the Fugate's history. For weeks, Kaween and Pendergrass found no one. The social withdrawal of the Fugate descendants made them reluctant to be seen or examined. Eventually, two blue siblings, Rachel and Patrick Ritchie, arrived at Pendergrass's clinic. Their appearance provided the breakthrough Carween needed. These siblings were closely related to the original Fugate line, making them ideal subjects for medical investigation. Carween performed a series of tests to evaluate their health. He found no signs of heart or lung disease, eliminating the theory of chronic oxygen deprivation. Hemoglobin tests were normal, ruling out anemia as a cause. With the most obvious explanations disproven, Kaween turned to scientific literature for parallels. He discovered reports of blue-skinned individuals among native Alaskans whose condition stemmed from a specific blood disorder. This disorder, methemoglobinemia, results when the blood contains excessive methemoglobin, a form of hemoglobin that cannot carry oxygen effectively. Through further testing, Kaween discovered that the Ritchie siblings had extremely elevated methemoglobin levels, 10 to 20 times the norm. They also lacked adequate diaphorase, the enzyme responsible for preventing such a buildup. This deficiency explained both their blue skin and the chocolate-like color of their blood. Methemoglobinemia is a recessive condition. Individuals must inherit the affected gene from both parents for it to manifest. In most populations, the likelihood of two carriers having children together is low, causing the trait to disappear over time. In the isolated valley of Troublesome Creek, however, intermarriage among closely related families significantly increased the chances of the recessive gene appearing repeatedly. This explained why the Fugates displayed the condition so consistently. Further investigation revealed that the disorder was not typically life-threatening. While it altered the blood's oxygen-carrying ability, many affected individuals remained healthy. Some experienced additional traits, such as unusual facial characteristics, absence of sweat glands, or reduced immunity to illness. 
However, the condition itself did not prevent long, productive lives. Its primary effect was the striking change in skin color. Once Carween identified the biochemical cause, he explored treatment options. He administered methylene blue, a compound capable of converting methemoglobin back to functional hemoglobin. The effect was dramatic. Individuals who received the treatment saw their skin turn pink as the blood returned to normal oxygen transport. The change, while temporary, provided a practical solution for those who wished to reduce their blue appearance. Kawain supplied methylene blue for long-term use among affected families. As transportation improved in the 20th century, many descendants left the region, married outside the small local gene pool, and diluted the recessive trait. Over time, methemoglobinemia became less common, and the once visible blue lineage gradually disappeared from Troublesome Creek. The story of the Blue Fugates endures as a rare example of how isolation, heredity, and misconception can shape a community's history. What began as a source of fear and myth was ultimately revealed as a simple enzyme deficiency, expressed through generations of intermarriage. This discovery transformed a tale of stigma into one of scientific understanding, illustrating how human stories can shift dramatically with new knowledge. The history of the Blue Fugates shows how an isolated community can preserve a rare recessive trait for generations. In Troublesome Creek, limited contact with the outside world and repeated intermarriage within a small population allowed methemoglobinemia to appear again and again, producing a striking blue skin tone that sparked suspicion and folklore. When scientific investigation finally reached the region, the mystery resolved into a clear explanation, an enzyme deficiency that altered how the blood carried oxygen. With improved transportation and marriages beyond the isolated valley, the trait faded and eventually disappeared. The case stands as a powerful example of how geography and heredity can shape human lives, and how understanding replaces fear when science is allowed to investigate the unknown. 